Steve Asmussen. Steve, uh, super stock. Uh, he took a spin out there today. Um, obviously, he just ran just a, a couple weeks ago, but give us your impressions of how he worked this morning. Uh, obviously, we're very happy with him. Um, very fortunate to be in the situation with super stock. As you mentioned, he won the Arkansas Derby two weeks ago today. Um, we're one week from the race. Um, thought he went over the racetrack extremely well. Uh, horse's confidence level is at an all-time high, and obviously we're living the dream with him. What tells you that a horse is confident? I guess <laughs> growing up in a barn. <laughs> <laughs> It was really cool seeing your whole family and, and how they, you know, enjoyed and their pride in your accomplishment in winning the race. Uh, when when can we see the, uh, the the family clan in town? Well, I'm expecting uh, Julie comes in this evening. Uh, Eric and uh, Keith come in Monday, and Darren and my and my parents come in Thursday. So we're gathering. Um, you know, Superstock has uh, done so much for the family. You know Keith's first stakes win. You know for your parents and just uh, what a special moment that was to enjoy together. And then uh, with the Arkansas Derby, with everybody there, and uh, you know, obviously a very special moment. But being able to reflect on it the last couple of weeks, just even that much more unique with coming wow. out of the pandemic as we were. You know. Uh, just rare for anybody to be at the races for about a calendar year's time. And then uh, kind of the first time we'd all gotten back together for a, a, a big race. And then uh, Superstock came through the way that he did. Uh, you know, a very special moment. How did, your, uh, how did Irv and your dad get together? Um, I'm, not, I'm not positive on that. They've uh, been longtime partners and very good friends. And... Uh, Irv Woolsey is just a, a wonderful uh, person to be around, you know, and you can hey, tell a lot about him. He's got the exact same friends now as when I first met him, and that was a long time wow. ago, you know, and uh, he, he's uh, very appreciative of Superstock and enjoying the ride. What would be the second biggest race you've won for your parents? I don't know. Sorry. Of course, you're hoping this is the second. The Arkansas <laughs> oh, Derby is the well, second biggest one. You know, it's, when it's all said and done. <laughs> we've been extremely blessed in the sport, and we've, uh, as a family, I, I strongly believe we'd, we've enjoyed all of these set successes together. Um, I think that, you know, obviously, me and Julie and the boys have talked a lot about this is this is their story you know mom and dad's um, they're 79 years old now uh, dedicated their life to, to horse racing and it's uh, you know fabulous to see that i think my favorite part of you know Superstock gave us we felt good about him going into the arkansas derby and you kind of imagined what it'd be like to to win it for him and then once he did as fabulous as it was i think that uh, the part that's made it so much better for me is everybody who knows my parents, you know, the how happy they are for them, the love and respect that they've shown to them since his Arkansas Derby win and going into the to the Derby is a, a very special feeling. Can you update us on Midnight Bourbon and uh, his training plans between now and the, the Derby? Midnight Bourbon, I thought, put in an excellent move over the race over the racetrack, but was expected. Um, he's a great big horse that uh, had a solid form as a two-year-old. Uh, as Jenny in an interview earlier, you know, when we first got here, he does check a lot of the boxes, and uh, it, obviously, he when you look at him physically, you, you it's easy to understand why he's better now than he's ever been, and we expect him to continue to get better. Will he work on Monday? Uh, like? I plan on breezing him on Monday. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we've got some pending weather this mm -hmm. afternoon. Uh, Churchill Downs has a you know, nice history of handling water extremely well. We've got races this evening, so we'll have a good feel of what the track's going to be like in the morning. Um, expect a strong gallop from Midnight Bourbon tomorrow with a, what will be an easy half-mile work for him on Monday. Was there a... a certain mindset to having him work Monday as opposed to say yesterday or today 
Uh, it's the getting him back in the rhythm that I think that he's had success with. With, his, with the weight that he carries and how big he is, I, I wanted him to have plenty of time to recover from uh, what I thought was a serious move last Got week. It. Can you talk, Steve, a little bit about your jockeys? Um, also, uh, we'll start with Santana, uh, who, how many years would you say has he been your kind of primary go-to guy? And, and uh, just talk about the relationship you all have had together. Well, you know, Ricardo's got a, 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 a tremendous amount of talent, you know, uh, and effort, which, you know, I, I think most impressive thing from equines and human is effort, you know. Um, He's putting it together. Last few years, you know, with the multiple Breeders' Cup wins, mm -hmm. it's, it's time for him to win a classic. Yeah. He obviously has a talent level that well within him to do so. What about, what is it about him? I, I want to say, you know, that even a few years ago, you know, you, uh, like Flo, would ride some of your other horses, such as Gunrunner, and obviously you have so many that you, you have to use multiple jockeys, but... He seems like in recent years, obviously you mentioned the Breeders' Cup wins. I mean, he has become a, a, a go-to force for you. And um, just uh, if you could reflect. Well, it, it becomes much easier to do with success on the highest level. Yeah. You know, um, been there, done that. You know, right. covered that ground. And uh, obviously, I'm pretty, I believe Ricardo's 25. I mean, really? what a future he has. Yeah. And then uh, Midnight Bourbon, um, I believe Mike Smith is up. Is that Who correct? isn't 25? <laughs> no, 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 that, right? But, you know, I just strongly feel uh, Midnight Bourbon's in, in position that, you know, we're there. You know, he, he's been away from the gates nice and clean. He's got a, uh, a big rhythm. Uh, horse has got an ec excellent pace to him. And... We've all witnessed Mike, and with those attributes at this level, um, I'm 0 for 21 in the Derby, and Mike isn't. <laughs> at the same time, though, and I went back through it, you've never had the Derby favorite. You've had a lot of double digit long shots who've overachieved. Uh, do you look at, can you say that on the other hand? You, <laughs> we're, we're, we're <laughs> hmm. I have two that should have won it, you know, that should have. They should have, you know, favorites. And that's opinion, whatever. But I, I came to terms with it over it wasn't meant to be. You know, you've seen the winners, and it was their turn. And it's just like uh, Superstock's Arkansas Derby. I felt it was meant to be. Why did it work out perfectly? Because it was meant to be. When you say those two that should have won, I assume you're referring to, to, to Gunrunner and Curlin. At least those are the ones that jump out yes, to me. Yes, to me too, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you, when you look at their Two horses made over $10 million. Yeah. yeah. Sure. When, you, when you look at their two races, um, obviously in Gunrunner's case, he really seemed to elevate his game at, at four you know, in yes, particular. But, but when you look at those two, what are the reasons you kind of put together for, for maybe why they didn't win on those given days? Or? Wasn't meant to be. Yeah. You know, if you'd have run it 30 minutes earlier, 30 minutes later, it just, yeah. I think that the Derby, more than any other horse race I've ever witnessed, seems to be more of an event than a race. Yeah. It just, it really does. I, I think that, it, not yet, was kind of our situation, but uh, obviously everything feels extremely positive right now. I uh, couldn't be any more pleased with how this group is traveling, the, the two Oaks fillies as well as both the Derby horses. I think they look great and are acting great and are going extremely well over the racetrack. With that being said, it, that has no bearing on how anybody else runs. Steve, can go back to your parents real quick? What's the biggest thing that they instilled in you? I apologize. Uh, go back to your parents real quick earlier. What's the biggest thing that they instilled in you? I think <laughs> everything. You know, I I think I'm just very fortunate to be the perfect storm. Um, I'm the youngest, uh, one older brother um, of, of a ma and pa organization. You know, mom trained and dad rode and, and dad's the best horseman I've ever seen in my life. And my mom's attention to detail is, you know, impeccable. I just, how spoiled I was to grow up in that shedra. Do you know how they celebrated their 60th? 
<laughs> they went to Vegas. Yeah, they did. <laughs> they did. You know, they, they, you know, beautiful thing. You know, won the Arkansas Derby, and a few days later was their 60th wedding anniversary. So, had plenty to celebrate. Nice. Did they win there, or did it? Uh, obviously, it didn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I didn't even inquire about that. Well, I I, did you have a good there. time? Was what came out of my mouth. I, yeah, I, I noticed Vegas is still open, so they didn't close it or anything like that. So. I remember you said once that one of the saddest days of your life was you'd gotten hurt as a jockey, and by the time you were unhurt, you were too big to ride. Well, you just... I, you know, my father was a jockey. Um, well into his 50s and stuff and I have one older brother who uh, had a very successful career it's, it's what I wanted to do and I think that uh, I, I definitely am somebody who learns far more from a loss than a, a win so it was <laughs> back to you <laughs> wasn't meant to be I was gonna say it turned out for <laughs> well. you see my parents <laughs> the height their height and mine you know there it just wasn't meant to be so you've Your come thoughts? to terms with with the derby and when it's meant to be is that a recent development did it take you years to get to that point I, I, when, when you're doing this you're in the middle of it at all times mm -hmm. i mean we're just I, i'm blessed with unbelievable opportunities every year with the horses and the pedigrees that are that we're given you know if not this year next you know we're we're still in the middle of this i'm Got plenty of years left. <laughs> what are your thoughts on? Give me uh, some insights on your oak starters and, and your impressions of how they're coming up to that race. Yeah, we're extremely fortunate to have uh, Clarera and Pauline Spurl going into the oaks this year. They're too royally bred, is not a good enough adjective for uh, a daughter of Curlin out of Cavorting and a Taffet out of Hot Dixie Chick that are look great on the racetrack um, they've run well to this point and every indication is, is that the longer they're around the faster they're going to be and what are some of your other i, I believe jackie's warriors going in the, in the pat day, day. we're we uh, plan on running uh, jackie's warrior and whiskey double in the pat day mile and uh, finite in the latrion is what it's called this year <laughs> right and uh possibly running Abrogate as well as Cantata in the eight bells. And regarding Jackie's Warrior, give, give me your thoughts. Obviously, you gave, her, uh, gave him excuse me, a, a two-turn try this year, and now he's back to, to one turn at a mile at you know, the trip that he won the Champagne over. Uh, what are your impressions going forward of him you know, back at the one-turn game? Well, obviously, he's mm -hmm. extremely exciting horse. He works unbelievable and he has continued to do that here and he will be very hard to beat. 